Hello and welcome to Joy News. Today, coming up, Chief Bass community members from crossing the Ofen River to their farms after four went missing in the river. We have details from Achiasi in the Ashanti region. In principle, MPs are in support of the bill, but we will do what it is right and lawful. That's according to the majority leader in parliament as he supports the promotion of proper human sexual rights and Ghanaian Family Values Bill 2021. But is the bill in danger of being thrown out? We have the latest from that press briefing. Municipal Chief Executive of La Nguantanan, Jennifer Dede Ejabing, assures processes have begun to pump stagnant flood waters out of some homes at Oyarifa, uh, which have been submerged for days. We have business, sports, world news, and show business all coming up in this hour. Stay with us. My name is Mama Bills Wabwadi. We start from the Ashanti region. The chief of New Achiase, Nana. Kwambi Kufur the first has barred community members from crossing the Ofen River until the water subsides or bigger canoes are acquired. This follows the drowning of four persons who were part of a group of 10 using a canoe to cross the river. A rescue team has retrieved three bodies after hours of search. One more body is still trapped in the Ofen River. Prince Apia was in the community and filed this report. <laughs> Dejection, sadness, and hopelessness remain the mood of members of the new Achiansi community in the Chumam Punya district as they await several rescue teams in search of those missing underwater. Four of their young ones drowned in the Orphan River on Friday. Ten of them were trapped when crossing the river to their farms, but six were found alive. So right behind me is the rescue team coming in with one of the bodies of the two remaining missing bodies in the Orphan River. Um, it has been a frantic effort by the rescue teams trying so hard since morning to try and find the missing bodies. The reinforced rescue teams put together by community leaders and NADMO have managed to retrieve three out of the four bodies on Monday. The body of the third victim, 25-year-old Kwame Ochre, was found trapped under a bamboo in the Orphan River. Here is the sister of the 25-year-old. So this group of individuals are the set of rescue teams put together by the community to help bring the missing bodies from the Orphan River to the community and their families. It's been a very tiring exercise. Started 8 a.m. this morning and for close to six hours, these rescue team have been on the Orphan River trying effortlessly to get the missing body. This is the leader of the rescue team and we'll speak to him briefly to understand how difficult the situation has been. So what he has been saying is that they went right deep into the Ofen River and they managed to identify the bodies. There were two but they were together and so they tried pulling them out and unfortunately they were able to get only one person. The other is still stuck in the Orphan River and that is what they are trying to prepare and go and get that body as well. So the assemblyman has been explaining that they are waiting for the officials from environmental protection agency and help disinfect the area uh, before they bury this particular body. 
Meanwhile, the chief of New Achiase, Nana Kwambi Kufo the first has ordered community members to stop crossing the river often until the situation normalizes. Yeah. The District Security Council has been on measures to avert recurrence of such incidents. Prince Apia reporting. Nothing works here. That's the outburst of Medina MP Francis Xavier Sosu, who has served notice of a constituency wide demonstration to demand immediate government attention to the poor roads and drains in the area. Scores of residents at Oyarifa Green Hills, a suburb within the constituency, have been trapped in their homes by flat waters for the past five days. Children are unable to go to school because the flat waters are yet to recede. We'll hear from the Medina MP shortly, but first, let's bring back that report by Manuel Cranting after visiting the area on Monday. The only difference uh, between the situation we have here at Oyarifa Green Hill and what um, was the situation two days ago is just an addition of two extra days. Uh, the water levels are still um, pretty much around the knee level. Uh, the people are still trapped in their homes. Um, over the side, I see some of the kids who are trapped in their homes, just, uh, you know, running about in the house, which in itself has been inundated um, by the water. Um, across this particular stretch where I have been walking through the flat waters, I see a stretch of buildings with markings of the La in Quantanai Medina uh, Municipal Assembly, which says stop work. Well, all of those um, warnings, if you like, uh, from the Municipal Assembly have fallen on deaf ears as we're seeing steady progress um, of the buildings um, on the waterways. I'll try and um, through the water, uh, you know, get to the side where I see a few of the uh, people who are trapped in this particular house. Um, that was last week, um, Wednesday. We're not expecting it. It was just drizzling. Then all of a sudden, it became serious. Then um, th uh, Thursday, um, this is not the second time. I think this is the third time. I've been here for two years and I've witnessed this for, I think, um, two years now. When it rains, there's no gutter, there's nothing should be done. We'll be inside, we can't go out. We have been stuck, the children are still home. We really need help. If the state, the government can bring us pump. For now, we can't plead for gutters because it's so choke here. There's no lay to be helped to create any gutters. But we need help as pump to let the water be a little bit okay so that we can go out. Well, Member of Parliament for the area, Francis Xavier Sosu, says the planned demonstration aims to draw attention to these and many other challenges being experienced in the community. I found an urgent question in respect of the lack of planning. I found an urgent question in respect of all the roads in Medina. And I've, actually, the Aimensa all the way to uh, Amrenia roads, there's an urgent question on that. There's an urgent question on roads in Sakura. And there's an urgent question on the abandoned project in Medina. Every, in fact, there's an urgent question even on the hospital project that has been abandoned because when you look at the Kikili Hospital, it's just with, left with something maybe less than 10 or 15 percent of work, and the entire hospital will be ready. And this Kikili Hospital services over 50,000 people annually, and yet it seems that nothing is working in Medina. I cannot be an MP of an area that would not work. If it is not working, I will make it work. Well, Chief Executive for the area, Jennifer Dede Ajabing, has assured that processes are underway to begin pumping stagnant flood waters out of the homes of affected residents. She says the threat to embark on a demonstration by the Member of Parliament is uncalled for. She spoke to Israel Lai earlier on the AM show. Was at a meal's time that the MPP government came to complete. Where was he? Has he taken the trouble to look at that? The immediate step, for, for instance, with the images that we, we, we are looking at, the immediate step is to look at the nearest um, drainage or the, the nearest storm drains that are around these areas. 
to uh, consume the water that has gone into their homes. We have other places where during this flooding, we, we would just use water pumps to pump out the water from their homes as an immediate solution for, for them, which currently is ongoing. Some we stay with the subject of flats and we're taking you live to Obeye in the Ga West municipality where residents have been locked up for close to two months now, uh, where my colleague Manuel Cranting reports that more people are still trapped in their homes in separate flooding incidents across the capital. Uh, Manuel joins us. Manuel, what can you report? Well, Mamavi, the situation here is quite similar to what we reported to you um, yesterday from Oyarifa. Only this time, this problem has persisted for longer, close to three months, we are told. Um, according to residents, there's a particular culvert, um, which is around this side of the uh, parcel of land, um, which, of course, uh, has been blocked. They say that a contractor who is currently working on um, a government-awarded um, road construction project here has blocked um, the culvert. Uh, since then, the water has been overspilling whenever it rains and floods the place. Well, it's usual for the place to flood, but it will always recede because the water flows through the culvert. The situation is different now because there's no culvert um, for the water uh, to flow through. Um, I'll just move away from here and I'll speak to... Um, you're, you're seeing some of the residents um, in your shots behind me now. And this is the daily struggle that they actually go through, how to move out of their house and um, how to have access um, to the remainder of the city. I see an, uh, you know, an older looking uh, man who is standing in the water, almost at the uh, knee level. So, um, is, is it safe to come through to that place? Yes. Okay, well, so uh, I'm just going to go a bit uh, forward and then uh, speak to them about how they have been living here and this entire stretch um, are, uh, you know, inhabited settlement. Um, we're told close to eight households, eight different households um, have been affected by this particular situation. I'm grateful, sir, that you could speak to us here um, on, on Joy News. You're live on Joy News today, sir. Uh, talk to us. How is this situation persisting? Well, you say it's gone for how long? Yes, we, are, we are in the third month now. It's three months now. Mm. We are in three. But, but, but how is it caused? Because we know that essentially um, after rain, the water will recede. It's been, the, the, the sun has been shining and so on. The water has guarded a certain spot. Mm. In fact, here, in front here, there's a deep hole there. And it's filled up. So the water st flow from that hole mm -hmm. uh, around. Mm. Mm. So it's permanent. So it doesn't move anywhere? It doesn't move anywhere. And it's been here, you say, in a third month? Yes, we are now entering the third month. But, but how do you survive? I, 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 I must imagine how you survive. Three months uh, having been caged in your room. Like we, we, luckily, I don't have my wife here. So I'm alone mm -hmm. with my, my child, who is a student mm -hmm. at uh, Infantipian School. Mm -hmm. So when he comes on holiday, he's with me. We alternate ourselves to go and buy things mm. for our house and keep it and be using food in particular. So you buy the food and stock up? Yes, yes, we stock it. And we buy non-producible materials. Mm. 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 Uh, well, let, me, let me speak to um, the other gentleman there. Mm. Um, it, this, this has been, what, three months, you, you mm. say? Mm. And after three months, I must assume that well, there are now some um, organisms that are breeding in the water, no? Yes, the other day we even saw, I saw about two big snakes and reptiles. Is, is it safe for us to keep standing well, in there? Well, you are oh, safe. They you have, yeah, they only, come at, they only come for sunshine and then go back. Mm. The, other one, the other day I met one just in front of my, 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 my house. Mm. My, the, my whole place is flooded. Mm. And I can even tell you, there's an old culvert there by the main road, which has been blocked. Mm. So all the water from the E block or whatever, come and there's a volume of water over here. Mm. It stops there and it doesn't move away. Then it comes back mm. to various areas. Mm. Almost, I can even say, eight houses have been affected. There's a block factory over here, mm. which volume, you can even see volumes of water. When we finish, you go there and see how it is. Mm. And then I have to pass through 
back of my fence wall before I can go out. You flip the wall? Yes, I have two ladders, one inner and then one outer. So I'll climb and then climb on the other one. So luckily when my, my children were going to school, I have to carry their own um, luggages and baggages through a taxi driver will be there waiting to pick up because they can't walk through. But, but what, what has been the response of authorities? I, I want well, to, uh, have, you, have you made any attempt yes. to get... I, I met, I met the, the, uh, the, uh, the Federal Rules Engineer. Nadmo has been here. Uh, the Assembly Engineer, not yet. But they are all aware about what is happening here. The place looks waterlogged, am I correct? No, it's not a waterlogged area. There was an extreme just in front here, about 10 years ago when I came here. So the old corvette, they've paved the old corvette purposely for that. But when the contractor was doing the road, instead of, instead of the contractor to connect the old corvette into the drain, he failed to do that. And instead, the, the drain is on top of the, the corvette. And then we got some estate guys around there. They have blocked the other place. So when water hits over there, it turns back. And you, you are the ones that suffer for it we, now. We are the, we are the ones who suffer. Mm. And, and indeed, Mama V, that's, that's the situation um, over here um, at uh, the, uh, uh, the, the, the uh, area where we're coming to you live within the Gangwes um, municipality, just uh, beyond the Obeye area. Now they've been caging their houses, as you've been hearing them, uh, for close to three months uh, uh, around Aie Kando Blue. Uh, efforts to get um, responses from authorities have not yielded much results. Uh, for now, though, they are left with, as you can see, um, the old man uh, to be using, uh, you know, sticks and poles to support them as they walk through the pool of water that's gathered here. Um, it waits to be seen whether or not there'll be any response for them. But that's all they have now. If you can hear me, Mavi, back to you in the studio. We thank you, Manuel Kranting, for that report. Now from Hobeye in Gang West, let's cross over to Parliament, where Majority Leader Osei Chairman Sabunso says members of Parliament in principle are in support of the promotion of proper human sexual rights and Ghanaian Family Values Bill 2021, but says that will not stop the House from doing what it is right or what is right in the consideration of the bill. The private member's motion, filed by Ningo Pram Pram MP Samuel George and seven others, who are seeking to criminalize people practicing and promoting LGBTQI plus. Ahead of the consideration, some faith-based organizations have warned of dire consequences, including voting out political parties, seen voting against the bill. But addressing the media, Majority Leader Osei Che Mensa Bonsu said the House will be guided by the Constitution and standing orders in deciding the fate of the bill. Let me, at the very outset, indicate that members of parliament are representatives of the people and the citizens of this country should rest assured that parliament would not turn our backs on them. We represent their interests in parliament and so we will do what is needful indeed the very first provision of chapter 11 of the Constitution, which is on the judiciary, provides, and for the awareness of doubt, let me, let me read. And that is um, Article 125 of the Constitution. It provides justice emanates from the people and shall be administered in the name of the Republic by the judiciary, who shall be independent and subject only to this constitution. I think the operative clause is justice emanates from the people. Why is the constitution stating this point so pointedly? It is because as Ghanaians, we have our own upbringing and we have our own set of values. Wherever we come from, from Asante, from Bruno, from 
uh, Volta region, from Uti, from Dagomba land, wherever. We have our set of values. And it's the values that guide us in life. And it's the reason why the Constitution provides that justice emanates from the people. Of course, in our own upbringing, I'm a Christian. I belong to the Assemblies of God. I cannot say that my upbringing has also not been impacted by my Christian values. Equally so for the Honorable Habib who is here by me. He's a Muslim and his upbringing is also impacted by his religion. But we have our own set of values. And I really don't know of any ethnic group in Ghana, any ethnic group in Ghana who would applaud the issues about LGBTQ plus plus whatever. So we have listened to the concerns expressed, and as I said, Parliament will do the needful. My plea is that those of them who are making contributions and uh, uh, calling into radio stations and so on, even speaking on television, we should cut off emotions and sentiments. Because once we do that, it clouds the rationality. So that's the majority leader of parliament, but there are emerging concerns with the bill and whether or not it may suffer termination. The majority leader has been providing some answers to that as well. I am not oblivious of the fact that some people have raised issues about uh, the bill vis-a-vis -vis Article 108, um, 108A especially Roman numbers two and three, which provides that parliament shall not, unless the bill is introduced or the motion is introduced by or on behalf of the president, proceed upon a bill including an amendment to a bill that in the opinion of the person presiding makes provision for any of the following. And two is important, the imposition of a charge on the consolidated fund or any other public funds of Ghana or the alteration of any such charge otherwise by, done by reduction. And then three also says, you shall not proceed on a bill including an amendment to a bill that in the opinion of the person presiding makes provisions for any of the following. The payment issue or withdrawal from the consolidated fund or any public funds of Ghana of any monies not charged on the consolidated fund or any increase in the amount of that payment issue or withdrawal. I'm not oblivious of this. And from Parliament, we head to the courts. Lawyers of former Cocoa Board CEO Dr. Stephen Opuning have told the Supreme Court not to set aside its decision to bar Justice Clemens Honyanuga from hearing his criminal trial. They say the judge had simply made up his mind that Dr. Opuning is guilty and determined to just go through the ritual of trial while waiting to pronounce sentence. The Supreme Court, in a close call 3-2 decision in July this year, restrained Justice Clemens Honyanuga from hearing the case following allegations of bias. Justice Honyanuga, a justice of the Supreme Court, has since 2017 been hearing the case as an additional High Court judge. The AG says... Not permitting him to hear the matter will amount to a miscarriage of justice. Co correspondent Joseph Akable has the rest of the story. He moved his motion. He explained to the court that the judge did not demonstrate any bias as had been alleged by lawyers for Dr. Opuni to merit being restrained from hearing the matter. He says the judge simply applied time-tested decisions of the Supreme Court. And if the Supreme Court was minded to set that aside or depart from its earlier decisions, the judge should not be the one bearing the brunt of that particular move. And so 
the matter that was before the Supreme Court was of the nature that there should be an error that was obvious. And so he said that no such error had been committed by the judge to warrant the intervention of the Supreme Court. Uh, the lawyers for Dr. Puni disagreed with this submission. They made the point that as far as they are concerned, Justice Clemens Onyeniga had made up his mind through comments he made while ruling on a submission of no case that he was going to sentence Dr. Opuni and was simply going through the ritual of trial. Uh, the AG at that point in time had some concerns about that comment, but uh, Mr. Uh, Kujo, who represents Dr. Opuni, made the point that those are matters that are already contained in the documents which they filed in court. After hearing both sides, the Supreme Court opted to adjourn the matter to October 26 to deliver its ruling on it. And so the review decision is important in that the initial decision was a 3-2 majority decision. The case was originally heard by Justices Jones Doche, A.M. Doji, Amadou Tanko, Lovelace Johnson and Gabriel Puaman. Justice Gabriel Puaman, who wrote the lead judgment, concluded that the test is an objective test based on the principle that justice must be done as he said that a case of bias had been made. He was backed by his colleagues, Justices A.M. Doji and Tanku Amadou. Justices Jones Doche and Lovelace Johnson disagreed. The review application is being heard by Justices Getru Tokonu and Professor Ashikote who have joined the original panel. Reporting for Join News from the Supreme Court, my name is Joseph Akable. You're watching Join News today. Stay with us. We have more stories to share with you. Thank you for staying with Joy News today. Let's take you to Wawasi. There's a farming community in the Efijak Kwabre South District of the Ashanti region. That's where a 47-year-old man has allegedly murdered three people. Why? My colleague Ohimeng Teria visited the community this morning and joins us live with more. Ohimeng, what would make a 47-year-old kill three people? Yes, uh, the entire community is in the state of shock and mourning, and they are yet come to tell as why uh, three men who be buried uh, within a period of uh, two days in this community. Uh, apparently, the information from the police appears uh, to be a bit different from what is being circulated in this community. The information I speak in this community that the suspect, uh, Kojo Eduse, is actually a palm wine tapper. And on Thursday, uh, he actually lured uh, his friend, identified as Kofi Banahini, uh, to the bush. Apparently, he claims to have seen his friend in his dream having an affair with his fiancée. Uh, so in order to prevent uh, his friend from carrying through uh, this particular dream he saw, he lured a friend to the bush and uh, murdered him. It was not until after uh, Mr. Barahini had failed to turn uh, up at home uh, that the sister, you know, sounded the alarm and informed the assemblyman who also organized a search party until Friday when they discovered uh, his lifeless body in the bush in an area where uh, Mr. Ekojo Edu said the suspect has been uh, working and operating over the period. And Saturday, then uh, the suspect, Kojo Eduse, also went ahead and uh, used the same machete he probably might have used uh, to kill Kojo, uh, Koshi Barahini, uh, to murder uh, two other victims identified as Fabina Eduji, 85, and Tami Pachi, age 86. Uh, so uh, the incident infuriated the youth in the community uh, who also attacked the suspect. And they took the intervention of the uh, Ankase police to uh, rescue him and then uh, got him admitted at the nearby Ankase Methodist uh, Hospital. So for now, the information is that uh, he's been discharged and he could soon uh, be arraigned. But he has denied uh, killing his friend, Kofi uh, Barahini, though he admits uh, killing the two uh, other men. But in his caution statement to police, he claimed that uh, one of the men, who is his, actually his grandfather, uh, has been disturbing him and even uh, collected his manhood. But it's not clear uh, the uh, form that this collection took, whether it was spiritual or uh, something that happened in the physical area. So police are still investigating 
uh, the three uh, murder uh, cases in this community. Very intriguing story indeed. Ohiming Teria will live it here. Thanks, Ohiming Teria, uh, with Insura FM bringing us details of how a 47-year-old is alleged to have killed three others, including his grandfather. This is Joy News. Today we take a breather, return with business with Daryl Kwal. Stay with us. Hello, welcome to Business. My name is Daryl Kwal. The Ghana Tourism Authority has acknowledged the tourism sector in the Shanti region needs a facelift in order to attract the necessary tourists and revenue. Ashanti Regional Director Mavis J.C. Ifriye says investing in the sector is critical to enhance the economic fortunes of tourism in the region. She was speaking at the launch of the Guba Awards held at Ejiso. Emmanuel Osei was there and filed this report. And as individuals and groups who have excelled in the area of arts, culture and entertainment. Officials say this year's scheme will celebrate the centenary of the influential Queen Mother of Ejusso, Nanaya Asantoa. It is expected to highlight the exploits made by the Queen Mother and encourage women in the diaspora to be high achievers. Claudia Andrews is manager for Guba Enterprise. We've had the awards in the UK and for the first time we're having in Ghana a celebration of 100 years of Yasan to us there. We're celebrating a woman of courage and resilience, which is why our theme is celebrating a symbol of courage and resilience. And also awarding um, honorees who over the years have trailblazed, they've set the pace within their fields, they've achieved things that we cannot even imagine, and specifically that they are women. So these are women that we see from what they've done to have the Yasan to our spirit. The Guba Awards are supported by the Ministry of Tourism, Arts and Culture and the Ghana Tourism Authority. Ashanti Regional Director for Ghana Tourism Authority, Mavis Jesse Efriye, says the tourism sector needs a facelift to attract tourists into the region. She says all efforts are being put in place. When domestic tourism boosts, there is the tendency that revenue to will also shoot. Uh, currently what we see is that the um, Yasantua Museum is down and that um, what the tourism industry is trying to do is to revamp the place so that at least it can attract a lot of tourists. A lot of people have been patronizing the attractions that we have. We have Kumasi Zoo currently is being patronized a bit. Uh, Menshia Palace is under renovation, so we do it's closed. But in the Shanti region, we have um, Bobri Forest, we have um, Kumasi Zoo, we have Cultural Center, and then Military Zoo. But because we are not traveling outside, people have realized that there's a need to travel within our own country. representation of Ghanaian businesses at the Just and the New Africa France Summit in Montpellier, France was obvious. This speaks to concerns about indigenous businesses in African Anglophone economies missing out on investment exchanges with Francophone counterparts. Take a listen to CEO of Oasis Capital, Matthew J, who was among the few Ghanaian business attendees. One of the striking things I saw was that the events is mainly uh, dominated by Francophone Africa, but you also reckon that there are a lot of French businesses that we saw in Paris and also here that are looking to the entire African continent. And it also brings to fore, particularly for those of us in Ghana who are surrounded by Francophone, that perhaps it is important that for us to give meaning to Africa free trade, we need to begin to look at the language because I can. I think that the reason why a lot of Ghanaians did not come or didn't even know of the event is because we seem to have closed our eyes to the neighbors around us. And everybody seems to think that the global language for business is English. However, it doesn't hurt to know one or two other languages that would help us to do business in the region. 
um, so, I think yeah. going forward that is very important. Yeah, so finally, uh, what's going to be your prospects for investment as an engineer? Uh, from the perspective where I also saw that there are a lot of youthful entrepreneurs, which is not dissimilar from what we see in Ghana. So going forward, what we are seeing is that a lot of investors are beginning to pay particular attention to the younger generation of entrepreneurs. And I think our recent census points to the same direction where there's a growing number of younger population uh, who are becoming more entrepreneurial. All they need is mentorship, training, and funding. And I think the continent has a better future from what I've seen so far. There's uh, more business news coming up at the top of the hour. Up next, Sports Uruk will have the latest on the Ghana-Zimbabwe match uh, set to take place at the top of the hour as well. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome to the sports segment. We're just about 20 minutes away from the Black Stars game against Zimbabwe in Harare. And some team news coming in. Black Stars skipper Andrea Yu and Fatali Sahaku have both been dropped from the starting eleven. Uh, in the reverse fixture against Zimbabwe. This match takes place at 1 p.m. today in Harare. Now, the duo have been replaced with Benjamin Tete and Baba Idrisu. And we do have more for you in the following report. At the lineup. So that's the lineup. Jojo Wolokota uh, uh, retains his place in goal. Uh, in defense, no change really. As Baba Idrisu comes into midfield uh, to replace Andre Ayu, who started as a midfielder in the previous game in Cape Coast. Jordan Ayu is moved to the right hand side to replace Fatal Sahaku. And that's because Benjamin Tete, who was a second half substitute in the first game uh, for Milo Van Ryevac, starts this time. And he gets his first competitive start in the number three jersey. Kamal Dean Suleimana and Mohamed Kudus, who are both impressive, particularly in the first half of that game, retain their places. But yeah, let's now find some more details as to why Andre Ayu was dropped from the team. Andre, who was on the score sheet in Cape Coast three days ago, as his goal sealed all three points for Milovan Rivers side on his second debut, has been dropped alongside Fatal Isahako, Benjamin Tete and Baba Idrisu come in place of the duo. The Al Saad forward became the tenth player to score 20 goals or more for the Black Stars over the weekend. With 97 appearances, the 31 year old sits second on the all time appearance list behind Asamoajan, who has 109 appearances. In Ayu's absence, Thomas Party steps in as the captain of the side. Meanwhile, the Ghana Football Association has reported the Zimbabwean Football Federation to the March Commissioner ahead of kickoff. Well, meanwhile, the Ghana Football Association has reported the Zimbabwe uh, you know, team and uh, to the match commissioner of the game after two members of the Black Stars advanced team. Uh, you were not you were denied entry to the stadium by security. We have more for you in the following report. The football governing body, tweeting via the Black Stars official handle, said it is just unfortunate. They claim their advanced team to the stadium made up of physiotherapist Samuel Kwame Ankoma and kit manager Daniel Yankee have been denied entry to the national stadium in Harare. They said the two Tideka team members were driven away by security guards at the stadium and they have since returned to the team's hotel. The Football Association revealed they have filed a complaint to the match commissioner just a couple of minutes away to kick off. It is also stated that Ghana's High Commission to Zimbabwe made applications for 30 staff of the embassy to attend this afternoon's game. However, out of the 30 applications made, only three were approved. They say the mind game is grand, but we at Ghana, we shall surely prevail. The government of Zimbabwe earlier this week announced the game will be played behind closed doors. Well, that's how we wrap up the sport here. Remember, we have live commentary for you of this game between Ghana and Zimbabwe, the World Cup qualifier on Joy FM at 1 p.m. So do make sure to tune in. That's the sport.
In show business, Ghana's biggest night of music and fashion, Rhythms on the Runway, is well on its way. This year's event is slated for December 4 at the Grand Arena under the theme, The Masquerade, to encourage everyone to keep wearing their face mask as the world gradually returns to normalcy from COVID-19. Mapito CBD spoke to KOD, Chief Executive Officer of the clothing line 1957, and Yvonne Oklu, head of events at 1957, on what to expect at this year's edition of the fashion show. Rhythms has become a Pan-African event. Yeah. That's the yeah. idea. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, whether you're from Ghana, Guinea, South Africa, wherever, whether you're from Jamaica, you're still, you, you, you pass to be part of yeah. the Pan-African dream of Rhythms on the Runway. So that's what it is. And um, in terms of music, there's someone coming from your native home. Uh -huh. Floey is coming to GH for Rhythms, and um, um, Chateauwale is headlining, D-Black. Pa, pa, pa. I know, I know, Pa, Pa, Pa. D-Black, um, Ifya, Kitty, Kim Promise, it's endless. Like, the very best, the cream of Ghana's creative industry is gonna be under, okay. under one roof. So I know it's the Masquerade Edition, uh, Fashion for the Situation. Yes, exactly. uh, Yeah, tell us about that, a little bit more about that. So, um, being where we find ourselves now, you know, we, um, so wear our mask wherever we go to. So we're thinking, okay, let's leave the designers to um, give us their own interpretation of um, what a mask should look like. Is it going to be the Venetian mask? Is it going to be the African mask? How will they interpret it? So we've left it to the designers. We come, sit down, you know, have a great time and see what the, the designers give us. Okay. 4th of December, right? 4th of December. Yeah, and where is it? Um, um, the Grand Arena okay. at the Accra International Conference Centre. Yeah. 4th of December, we're there, we're going to have music. Of course. We're going to have fashion. It'll be nice to see you on the runway. I think so too. <laughs> Let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. All right. The event is called The Masquerade. So two years, we've been walking the streets in masks. Um, we started out from doing nothing, being on lockdown, then going out only when it's necessary. And then now we are going out with our mask on. So where's the fashion in that, really? And what's the entertainment in that? So we're picking ourselves up. Last year, nobody could travel. So we had a 100% GH edition. This year, there are vaccines and people are beginning to open. The borders are open. So we are having international um, designers back on board. And so it's called the masquerade. And we say we are trying to make fashion of the situation. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I really like yeah. That. yeah. Fashion of the situation. Exactly. Oh, that's, that's, that's so it's the so it's the masquerade. All right. Now, what can we expect? What 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 are we, what, what will we see on the runway? What can you not expect? Oh, wow. We have twelve designers from Ghana and the African diaspora. Um, there are about 12 different artists. So this year what we are going to do is have um, collections back to back with a few music um, breaks and then there'll be like a jam at the end of it. Right. Yeah. Can you uh, name a few of the designers? So there's KTO, there's Senor Foley, there's Jesuit Shegun, um, there's Pal Pal Paladio uh, from Togo, um, on the music front, there's Ifia, there's Famia, there's Adina, um, there's Miss Flowey from South Africa, and there's Mike Starkey from the USA, and a few other big board artists like um, Adam. Exactly. So it's going to be a packed house. It looks like Christmas is already being planned. And that's it for show business. Indeed, that's it for Joy News today. On behalf of the production team, we thank you for watching. But for more news, log on to myjoyonline.com. My name is Mama Vyoswabwaje. Bye for now.